Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, nice sunny day out today. Getting kind of hot and humid, but good day for washing engines. I've got Hal's engine here, ready for its final wash. Uh, I tried washing this one a few times, but uh, still needs one more. Uh, we got to get some of that grime out of the inside of the engine. And here is Gary's engine. And we'll talk more about this in a bit. But i um, going to give it a good washing. Got to clean out all the coolant passages. Uh, I'm sure a lot of garbage is going to come out of there. That hole was completely plugged. Um, so we're going to give both of these a good washing. Um, and then uh, Hal's. I think you can already see the brass core plugs in there. Uh, Hal's, we're going to bag immediately and because um, we're going to assemble that one. Uh, Gary's, we are going to, um, we'll bag it as well, dry it and uh, get it ready for machine work. Okay guys, this is a house engine. Got his final wash. I blew it out with compressed air. I spray all the machine surfaces with WD-40 inside the bores where the valves, the valve seats where the valves are going in. I spray all that with WD-40. And we're gonna get a bag, we're gonna bag this up and uh, I'll be ready to assemble next week sometime. Um, Gary's engine over here, uh, it was filthy inside as suspected. Uh, the cooling system had never been cleaned. Uh, it, it, a lot of junk came out of this one. And like I say, we got cracks in a lot of places. Uh, we got poorly installed helicoils in a lot of places. Uh, we got quite a bit of work to do on Gary's engine. Um, but on this video, uh, I just want to talk about Gary's engine, the, the whole situation. Uh, like I said, I talked to Gary and I talked to Dan. Um, obviously Dan is upset that he didn't get a chance to make this right. Um, I talked to Dan yesterday and in the first video, there was some threaded rod in Gary's engine, okay? Now Gary took this engine to a different machine shop and he did a little bit of, he put, the, Gary put those, those inferior studs in there. Dan felt like I was attacking them. Like I said, that came from their shop that way. It did not come from that shop. He feels like he's been tried before he had a trial. Uh, a lot of people are giving him grief about why don't you give Gary back his money. Um, I'm in the middle of that right now. Uh, it's not where I want to be. Uh, I've, I've talked with Dan. I understand his situation. At the same time, you can't put out shit engines like this. Uh, I talked to Gary. Um, he paid good money for this engine. He got nothing for it. Uh, I believe he talked to Dan one time. Did not feel confident in going back and having the engine fixed with Dan. And that's when I came on the scene. And my goal is not to... Um, screw up Dan's business or anything like that. That's not what I'm after. I just don't want people to go through what Gary's going through. Um, uh, he basically told me he paid $5,300 for this engine. We cannot use the crank. The engine block 
is in tough shape. Nothing has been done correctly on this engine. And those are just the facts. Whether um, I'm ruining somebody's business by saying that, uh, you know, I can't help that. You, you, you hit your wagon to a machine shop that puts out stuff like this, and at some point, somebody's going to call you out. Um, it's not done in a malicious way, but there's no reason why somebody should have to go through this and pay for two engines to get one, basically. So, um, there's some stuff to talk about. I'm going to get Hal's engine bagged up real quick, and then I'll be back with you. Okay, guys, going to bag up Gary's engine just to keep it clean. Uh, these are my bags from ERA, Automotive Engine Rebuilders Association, which I am a member of. Um, you don't have to be a member of this particular Engine Rebuilders Association to rebuild an engine, but I find more professional guys are members than not. Okay, now, if you've been following my channel, you remember a while ago, I said I don't really have any friends. And it's situations like this that make that true. Um, nobody likes me for telling the truth. Um, nobody cares about putting a good product out like I do. Um, it's just, nobody, nobody likes that in me. So, like I say, I don't have many friends, professional or any way. I think I set the bar too high. Um, when you come here, I tell you what I'm going to do, and I do it. This particular engine, um, like I say, I talked to Dan quite a bit. And this is probably going to be the last I have to say about this because it's really, it, it's kind of aggravating. Um, I took the time, I went on his website, I saw the write-up about his engines. Um, tur it tur turned my stomach. Yeah, we're going to bore your engine with hone it. Yeah, we're going to deck it. Uh, we're, we're bringing our engines to a new level. Um, it's sad. Um, I, I just, I'm going to wash my hands of the whole situation. I'm going to do, just keep making videos. I'm putting this behind me because when you read what kind of engine you're going to get from that shop and you get something like this, and this is not one engine. This is my third engine that I am rebuilding from that shop. Um, that's too many. That, that's disgusting. Okay? When you see how much is wrong with this engine, um, I don't know what kind of shop it is. They won't reach out to me. I can't talk to them. I don't know who they are. I don't care anything about the machine shop. Um, you know, I, I tried to talk with Dan about this and I understand if somebody took one of my engines to another machine shop and they did some stuff I'd be pissed off too I don't believe Dan got the chance to fix this but Gary had a hard time with him and he didn't feel like he was going to get anywhere with Dan so that's why I have the engine that's why I have a half a dozen in engines in here right now is because people trust me I don't know of another channel out there that shows the actual work being done on their engine um, so I feel like I'm all alone out there. Again, like I said, uh, and I'll say it again, I don't have any friends in the business because, you know, like I say, the bar is too high. There, there's nobody equal to what I'm doing, and this is a perfect example of it. Okay, guys, since we're talking about engines today, we're back on Mark's engine a little bit. I've been soaking this and I've just turned it upside down and I'm getting about a half inch of movement in the crank right now. That's a good sign. I've got it on the run. Um, I'll flip it back over, refill the cylinders and I say in another day or so we're going to have this guy rotating where we can take it apart. Now when I took the pan off, Mark was missing his oil pickup, I believe that's on the way. I believe that's coming. Uh, there's, there's a lot of parts missing to this engine. I, I, I don't know why it was taken apart, or, or I think he may have got it taken it apart. I, I don't know the full story on this engine. But um, uh, parts are coming in for this, and hopefully 
I'll be able to get the crank out, send that out to the crank shop, and uh, start cleaning the machine in this one as well. Okay, guys, just cleaning up here. Um, like I say, this is gonna be this is gonna be it for me as far as being in the middle of this um, this engine. Uh, I don't feel good about the engine. I don't know what I would do if I was Dan, but um, uh, I'd probably cut that machine shop out of my life and I don't think that's going to happen with them. I, I don't really know and I don't really care anymore. Um, recently, I was working on a CJ5, had some guys around the shop uh, helping me finish it up. And when you trust somebody to do something, you expect it to be done right or they're going to let you know it's not right. A couple guys helped me or they were wiring the dash. Uh, I go to take the first test drive. The the Speedo has no lights. It has no indicator light, has no oil, has no amp light. None of that's working. I had to change the Speedo anyway, but basically, again, here it is again. I don't have any friends. You think you have some friends helping you out. They don't tell you the bulbs are bad. They don't tell you they didn't wire it right. That's it. Those, you know, I mean, I don't want kind of, I don't want those kind of people around the shop. You know something? Um, and my name is on it in the end, just like Dan's name is on this engine. For me, those people are gone. I don't want you around the shop. I don't want you doing anything. I want you coming around here. You, 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 you basically did me wrong on that. Um, so I can't have that. That kind of, that kind of work, isn't going to fly around here, and. I won't have it. I think that's what Dan should do, but again, I can't say that. I mean, three engines out of a machine shop that are bad, that's like an epidemic. That can't be. With me, you got a chance, you're giving you a chance to do something, you screw it up, get out. You're not welcome back. I don't want shit like that going on around here. I prefer working alone for a while there. I've been lately, so much work coming in, I thought I could maybe hire somebody um, I don't want that I'm taking in less work and I'm gonna try and just do enough that I can do because like I say it's, it's crazy out there the world's going to shit and it's it's getting as far as to into my shop I don't need that I don't want that like I say uh, this whole engine thing I got in the middle of and I don't want to be there either everybody's got to keep their own house I sleep good at night. I hope everybody else does, but you know, like I say, you put out engines like that, it's bad. I know he didn't get the chance to fix it, but when you see the facts and you concentrate on just a couple of studs and you're like, I want people to know I didn't put those studs in, but you got an F head cam and an L head and that gets glossed over. You got a bad crank, that gets glossed over. Uh, you didn't bore in home. You got 60 over pistons and practically an 80 over hole. That doesn't get addressed. I've had enough. I'm fed up with it. Um, this is, the, like I say, this is the last video on this. I'm sorry I'm dragging everybody into it. I just want you to know. Be 100% careful when you're buying an engine. Be careful when you're going to a machine shop. Um, since this video, three other guys have gotten a hold of me. And they're like, my machine shop screwed up my engine. It's better you watch my old videos. You realize what you need to ask machine shops. You realize what you want them to do or what you expect of them. And if you don't think you can get that, keep digging until you find somebody. Um, I have engines from all over the world in here. There's a reason for that. I will show you what's happening with your engine. I will let you see the boring, the honing, the decking, the assembly, everything about it. I put out a good product, and as engine machinists, we're able to deliver a good product. Because if we can hold tolerances, we can make round holes, we can resize rods, we can deck things perfectly flat. As machinists, we can do that. If you say you're going to do it and you don't, 
You do not deserve to be in the business. You should not be building engines. You should not be taking people's money. And that's just that's just how it is. So please, everybody, be very careful. Um, if you're talking to a machine shop, you're not sure about it, you want to ask me about it, stick a comment below. Contact me directly through email. Do what you can do so you don't wind up like Gary. Um, there's no need for it. Uh, you know, this engine was painted nice, but on the inside, garbage. Um, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry Dan is having a hard time with this. It's just a disgusting situation, and we need to put it to bed right now. Gary, I'm going to continue to show you how to rebuild your engine, uh, and I'll show you every step of the way. You're going to see your engine be rebuilt properly. You know what you're going to get when you get it. And that's about all I have to say about that. I'm going to continue. I'm going to show how, how his engine goes together. I'm going to show Mark how his engine goes together. The shop is humming right now. It's busy. And I'll make videos as time allows. Hey, guys. Sorry for the long rant about this. Um, there's been a lot of comments. There's been a lot of uh, talking on the phone to all the associated parties with this mess uh, like I say um, this is it this is it for me I don't you know I don't really care what happens except with what's going on with the engine in my shop um, Gary is my customer I do the best possible job I can for him um, it's unfortunate that things like this happen there's no need for things like this to happen but I see it all the time. Uh, about 50% <clears throat> of the engines I rebuild are re-rebuilds from other shops. Um, that is, that's too many. Uh, I don't know why people are having such a hard time with L and F heads. Um, if, if you watch my videos, you can see how to put a good one together. Uh, I have engines all over the world running with thousands and thousands and thousands of miles on them. But if something did go wrong, um, I would take care of it. I'd find a way to take care of it. Um, but again, I don't care what happens so much with... Gary has washed his hands of this. I have washed my hands of it. Um, man, we're going to continue on from there. Whatever happens... Uh, with the shop and the machine shop at this point I don't really care uh, I wanted to talk to the machinist just to see what the hell happened here uh, I'm not going to get the opportunity to I don't know who it is at this point I don't care who it is you keep doing your thing and that'll keep me in business for years to come I imagine because people are going to find me when they get a bad engine um, shouldn't be like that but sadly it is so, like I say, everybody do what they have to do with their shop. You know, like I say, I'm doing what I have to do with my shop. Basically, um, I'm a one-man show. I can't push it off on anything. I can't blame anybody. I'm not going to blame anybody. But at the same time, um, this is not a club to hang out in. You know what I mean? Don't get the urge... If it's raining, if it's cold out, if it's this, if it's that, if you got nothing to do, if you're bored, don't get the urge to come here. Um, I am a one-man show, and it's going to be like that, and it's always going to be like that. So, um, again, don't have any friends professionally in this business. Nobody wants to associate with me, and that's good. That's the way I want to keep it. That's how it's going to be. Um... Again, sorry for such a long rant. This has just been really, really weighing on me. Really pissing me off. Um, I take it seriously. Like I say, you remember when I was looking for somebody, I was like, hey, I need somebody with passion. Well, that's what happens. I take this seriously, and it, it, it hurts me when people have to go through this. It, it's sad to say, but you know, when this is what you do, and you see what's happening to other people for no good reason, you know... It bugs me right to the core. So, I'm going to end this one here before I really keep going. Uh, as always, I appreciate you guys watching. My message is this. 
be extremely careful if you are going to buy a Willys L or F head engine. There is not a single place that I could recommend that I would send anybody to. So be extremely careful before you lay down your hard earned money for an engine. Um, we don't need anything else to happen like this out in the Jeep world. It's just bad juju. So, um, again, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. A lot of things going on. Um, got a T18 up on the bench that's getting uh, adapted over to that 208 transfer case. I've got plenty of engines to build. I got Chuck's axles out there from California, which I had hoped to get to last week, but we're going to get to them this week. So, there's a lot coming up. Um, stick around, keep watching, uh, spread the videos around, and uh, everybody be safe out there. I'll catch you on the next one.